The deputy administrator of NASA came to the valley today to take a fresh look at Bigelow Aerospace. The local company is building a line of spacecraft that could eventually be used on the moon, even Mars. The NASA official stopped short of announcing a deal to attach a Bigelow spacecraft to the International Space Station, though that agreement is likely to be reached in the next few months. But who will pay hundreds of millions of dollars to get to space, and what will they do when they get there? The yeah, IT's George Knapp has an inside look at the Bigelow business plan. Dave, let's say you're Canada. You, you don't mind right. that, do you? No, no. Let's say you're Canada, you spend $300 million a year on your space program, but that amount will get you a single astronaut visit to the space station over a five-year period. By leasing space on one of Bigelow's private space facilities, Canada could, have, Canada could have five astronauts in space for about half as much money. A third world country that wants to keep its best science students from leaving the country might be able to transform its national image by having an astronaut corps without paying for an entire Entire space program. That's basically how it would work. Of having visitors and having people uh, come to the moon, that would be the, the destination of all time. There'd be more than a few politicians and, and rich folks that would want to do that. I mean, and the rest of us as well. The idea of a zero gravity resort on the surface of the moon isn't far fetched at all, certainly not to Bob Bigelow. When he launched his private space program a decade ago, the assumption was he wanted to duplicate the success of his earthly hotel chain out there. And while Bigelow is convinced tourism will help drive the commercialization, of space. He never intended to run any hotels himself. Bigelow Aerospace is more of a contractor. It will build and lease expandable space habitats as standalone modules in orbit or craft combined into space stations like Station Bravo, capable of housing a crew of 24, or as the backbone of permanent bases on the moon or Mars, surfaced by stations orbiting above. There's no reason that you couldn't have multiples, multiple bases. Other than transportation, meaning rockets reliable enough to get the modules into space, Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. The main challenge is making it profitable. Bigelow thinks corporations would lease out a module or entire station, slap their brand on the exterior like a company naming a sports stadium for research or for bragging rights. He's already reached tentative deals with seven countries based on specific prices outlined in his leasing guide. It would not be cheap, for instance, to lease a Sundancer craft for a year, roughly a few hundred million dollars, but would still be a bargain compared to starting a complete space program. The ISS, for instance, cost the U.S. more than a hundred billion dollars. Bigelow says he could build a much larger and safer station for a fraction of that cost, and it turns out his first customer will likely be NASA, whose deputy administrator confirmed that a Bigelow module could soon be added to the ISS.